Hello everyone, welcome to another video on mechanics of solids. This is Manas and in today's session, we'll talk about how stresses are induced in case of composite powers. And some of you guys might be thinking, what is a composite power? Let's say we've got a system in which there is a steel tube and there is a copper rod. This is what you call a composite system. How does it react to temperature changes? How much is the stress induced? How much is the total elongation? All of this and much more coming up in today's session. And here we go. So guys, first of all, just with the help of an illustration, I am going to explain you how the stresses are going to be reduced and what is going to be the total elongation. Just take a look at this example. This over here is a composite system you can say and uh, some portion of it is made up of brass and the remaining portion is steel and they are rigidly fixed. They are rigidly fixed. Please note this down. Okay. And by the way, you can keep on making notes, keep on pausing the video in between and keep on making notes. That is going to be very, very helpful. So <clears throat> one thing which you need to remember that the coefficient of linear expansion for brass is going to be more than that of steel. Remember this. Now, if the coefficients value of brass is more than that of steel, then obviously the free expansion in case of brass will be more than that of steel. That's for sure. One more thing is the length of initially the length of this brass material is going to be equal to the length of the steel. Right. So what are we going to do? We are going to increase the temperature say from T1 to T2. Okay. So that means we are essentially increasing the temperature in that process. You can say there is a rise in temperature and T is equal to what T is equal to T2 minus T1. T2 minus T1. That's for sure. Take a look at this timeline. This is initial and this has got to be the final diagram. I'll show you how that all of that spans out and what is exactly the difference between them. So just think about this. If we allow these two materials to expand freely. Let's say they are not rigidly connected to each other. What would have happened? Brass would have expanded more than steel. Let me just show you what could happen. Here it is. Well, there have there would have been some expansion in case of steel also. Let's say it's here. So basically guys, this over here, this is the initial level you can say, okay, initial level. Let me just write I L over here. And if you watch carefully, the final expansion is going to be different. Okay. I'm going to be drawing it over here. Don't worry. So if we allow them to expand freely in that case, in that case, this over here will be alpha T L. Well, by the way, L B is equal to L S, which is also equal to L for the composite bar. So this is uh, 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 uh. So this is alpha B and that's it. The rise in temperature is going to remain same and also the length is also initial length of both brass and steel are same. Fine. As far as this steel rod is concerned, its free expansion would be somewhere here and this free expansion can be written as alpha for steel temperature rise multiplied by the initial length. Okay. But the final observation is, is a bit different. Please watch. Here it is. And this is where the fun begins. Watch this. Okay, let me just write over here. This is, uh, by the way, this is steel and that's brass. Now, if you watch carefully, this is the overall expansion and I've already told you that these two materials, these two rods members rather have been rigidly fixed. Okay. Now, because of which the overall expansion, this is the net expansion or the overall expansion and this is going to remain same. So if you take a careful look at this, the free expansion in case of brass was this much. Right? But the overall expansion is a bit less. Why? Because there has been a compressive force over here. And because of this compressive force, because of this compressive force, there is going to be a stress. 
right and this stress is going to be compressive let me assure you this stress is going to be compressive secondly steel should have expanded only this much only this much but steel has done more than expected steel has gone beyond what was uh, its what do you call free expansion that means there must be some kind of tensile force acting over here let's say that that tensile force is represented by p and by the way this force and this force both of them are going to be equal to each other okay and the stress generated over here in case of this steel rod this steel rod is going to be tensile in nature so you can just make an assumption rather make a conclusion that there is going to be compressive stresses along this brass and there is going to be a tensile stress in case of steel so there is one conclusion which we can make when alpha brass is greater than alpha steel then there is compressive there is compressive stress in brass and and tensile stress in steel this is a conclusion which we can make right once again once again let me explain you this entire drama so initially there were two rods two materials two members brass and steel both of them were rigidly fixed so one thing is for sure if there is a tain change in temperature say from t1 to t2 which gives which allows us to have this t that is the rise in temperature whenever there is a change in temperature both of them are going to expand in a collective sense the expansion in both the brass as well as steel is going to be same so this is the overall expansion but in between we also saw that since the coefficient of linear expansion for brass is more than that of steel then in that case brass should have expanded more than that of steel that's for sure now again we we are actually getting confused so brass has actually done less than expected and steel has actually done more than expected right now since steel has done more than expected there must be a tensile force acting on steel and since brass has done less than expected that is a compressive force has been has been automatically indicated in case of this brass rod now you can clearly say or rather we can clearly conclude that whichever material has a higher value of coefficient of linear expansion listen to this very carefully it is better that you can note this down whichever material has a higher value of coefficient of linear expansion that is going to undergo compressive stress and the second material will undergo tensile stress that is for sure now what we are really interested in is how to formulate all of this with the help of mathematics and that is something that i'll let you know right now so keep watching okay one more thing free expansion free expansion right because of compressive force if you watch carefully right this, this, i mean this was expected of brass this over here how much is this this is sigma l over e okay this is the compressive stress in brass and over here if you watch carefully this much this over here this is sigma steel l upon e that's it now now let me just do this overall expansion in case of brass let me just write where in very very short form overall expansion in brass will be equal to overall expansion in steel right so this is less than expected remember this less than expected or less than you can also say this is less than free expansion right and this is more than expected this is more than expected and this is more than free expansion more than free expansion so if i were to frame this into a formula so please watch this overall expansion of brass this is the overall expansion of brass and this also is the overall expansion for steel both of them are going to remain same so the free expansion of brass is alpha b t into l this is alpha b t l 
but it has done less than expected that is less than free expansion this was the free expansion it has done less than that okay less by how much this much so this is how much sigma l over e so minus sigma l over e okay so e for what e for brass right so i should put e for uh, brass over here and i should put where are we supposed to go e for steel over here okay now the free expansion of steel if you watch carefully if you watch carefully this is the free expansion of steel and steel has expanded actually this much right in a in an overall sense this is the overall expansion of steel this is equal to this much that is the free expansion plus this much because of tensile stresses sigma s l upon e s so this is also fairly simple this is going to be alpha s t l and since it has done more than expected that is by a positive sign plus this is going to be sigma l over for steel it is going to be s this is s and this is for b that's it that's it so this is the equation which we are going to be using a lot especially in case of problems for composite bars and when it is given a certain temperature rise there is one more thing which you can write is from equilibrium condition from equilibrium condition since everything is at an equilibrium right both of them have expanded by the same amount that means the tensile p tensile a tensile force is equal to p compressive so where, where which member is going through a tensile force the member going through the tensile force is this steel so p in case of steel is equal to p in case of what brass because that is undergoing a compressive stress or compressive force again this is fairly simple load upon area is sigma so load is equal to sigma into area fairly simple sigma s a s is equal to sigma b dot a b so this is one more equations right now the problem becomes very easy and we'll see uh, we'll be taking one example by the help of which i'll let you know how the induced stresses can be worked out when this entire composite system is given a temperature rise so let's take a look at that problem so this is basically a problem on a on a composite bar so there is a steel rod no there is a steel tube and there is a copper rod let me just write down all the information which has been given to us number one there is a steel tube so obviously there is going to be an internal diameter as well as an external diameter okay so d outer has been given as let me just see 30 mm and d inner the inner diameter has been given as 20 millimeters apart from this any more information on the steel rod okay young's moduli also has been given for steel as well as um for copper also let me just write everything regarding steel rod first of all so the young's modulus for steel has been given as let me just check once again this is 2.1 into 10 raised to 5 2.1 into 10 raised to 5 this is newton per mm square done coefficient of linear expansion in case of steel well it is equal to 11 into 10 raised to minus 6 per degree celsius done so that's all we have with respect to steel okay 30 and 20 now now let's just talk about this copper rod copper rod okay what information regarding copper rod has been given first of all the diameter of this copper rod well this is solid not hollow this one is hollow it's a tube copper rod is 15 mm in diameter apart from that the young's modulus for copper ec has been given as if you watch carefully ec has been given as let me just see 1 into 10 raised to 5 1 into 10 raised to 5 newton per mm square and the value of alpha coefficient of linear expansion for copper has been given as 18 into 10 raised to minus 6 per degree celsius so that's all that's all the info we have one more thing initially there is no stress at a temperature of 10 degree celsius okay note no stress but the temperature has risen from t1 to t2 now t2 has been given as 200 degree celsius 200 degree celsius so there is a rise in temperature a rise in temperature 
and that rise is actually represented by capital T. So capital T will be equal to T2 minus T1. Once you do this, 200 minus 10 is going to give you this value 190 degrees Celsius. Okay, now let me just draw the arrangement first so that we can have a better picture. Right, let's do this. Now let us try to take this session forward and let us try to make a comparison between coefficient of linear expansion for both uh, steel as well as copper. So you can clearly see this is for copper and that's for steel and it is clear that alpha for copper is greater than alpha for steel. That means this material that is copper is going to undergo, undergo compressive stress, compressive stress. Let me just write this over here, compressive stress, whereas steel this is going to undergo tensile stress. Okay, this is going to expand less than expected. I mean, the overall expansion is going to be less than the free expansion. And here, the overall expansion is going to be more than the free expansion. Well guys, the reason for all of this has been explained just a few minutes back to you. Again, since the value of alpha C is more than alpha S, this material that is copper is going to undergo compressive stress and this steel is obviously going to undergo tensile stress. This is going to expand less the overall expansion here. OE by the way is the overall expansion. The overall expansion of this copper rod is going to be less than its free expansion, less than expected. And in case of this steel tube, the overall expansion is going to be more than the free expansion, more than expected. Now let us try to apply a bit of mathematics and let us try to calculate these two values. That is sigma for steel and this is sigma for copper. These two are the stresses which we need to work out. Let's see how that can be done. Again, first of all, we need to create an equation. We know that the overall expansion in steel in steel will be equal to steel what? It's not just any steel, it is a steel tube by the way. Overall expansion in steel tube is going to be equal to overall expansion in a copper rod. Okay? Copper rod. So this is undergoing tensile stress, this is undergoing compressive stress. This is undergoing tensile stress. So first of all, how much is the free expansion? Free expansion is alpha T L. Alpha for what? Alpha for steel. So it is doing more than expected that means a positive sign over here plus what sigma l over e okay this is pl by ae by the way sigma l over e since we are talking about a steel tube we will put s and s over here this is going to be equal to first of all we will have the free expansion free expansion is alpha tl alpha for what copper so put a subscript c over here then for copper it is going to undergo compressive stresses and this is the overall expansion is less than the free expansion. This is free expansion less than the free expansion minus how much this is sigma L upon E for a copper rod put a subscript C. Okay. I mean you can clearly see L can be taken as common from both LHS and RHS and it will obviously cancel out. Okay. Let's just write one over here. Second thing is force. What kind of a force are we having? First of all, let me specify it clearly. The force applied over here in this, uh, what do you say, copper rod. The force applied in this copper rod will be of a compressive nature here. The force in this case is going to be of a compressive nature. Okay, in this direction. Try to reduce the length. Whereas the force in this case of steel is going to be of a sort of tensile nature. This is steel. <coughs> now this is also equilibrium condition. Force in steel is going to be equal to force in copper. That's for sure. And you can also write it this way. That sigma S AS is equal to sigma C 
a c now let, let us try to punch in the values so starting from here sigma s sigma s sigma s multiplied by area of steel rod this is the area the area of the ring okay that's not a steel rod but it is a steel tube so it is going to be equal to pi by 4 d square pi by 4 of outer dia minus inner dia outer dia is how much 30 inner dia is 20 so this is going to be 30 square minus 20 square and that's it is equal to sigma c multiplied by ac again for copper rod that is not hollow this is solid pi by 4 d square and d for copper is 15 multiplied by 15 square you just have to solve this pi by 4 and pi by 4 will cancel out so 15 square is 225 30 square minus 20 square that is 30 minus 20 into 30 plus 20 10 into 50 500 so 225 divided by 500 okay sigma s let me just write this final expression is going to be something like let me just show you sigma s is going to be equal to 9 over 20 sigma s is going to be equal to 9 by 20 times of sigma c and let's call this as our equation number 2 what we are going to do is we are going to put the value of sigma s is equal to this much from equation 2 into equation 1 that is over here so let's let's quickly do, do this 2 in 1 putting the value of sigma s is equal to this much from equation 2 in equation 1 let's see what we get alpha s t into l what is alpha s well that's where is it 11 into 10 raised to minus 6 and by the way l will cancel out okay let me do this so we have this as 11 into 10 raised to minus 6 multiplied by t temperature rises 190 degrees celsius so done this is the free expansion of steel so it has done more than expected plus sigma s this is what we are supposed to calculate es es is how much 2.1 into 10 raised to 5 so this is 2.1 into 10 raised to 5 is equal to again alpha into t alpha for copper is 18 into 10 raised to minus 6 okay and by the way the temperature is 190 degree done with a negative sign okay copper is going to undergo compressive stresses that's why a negative sign sigma c sigma c over 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 what sigma c over ec what is the value of ec ec is how much 1 into 10 raised to 5 1 into 10 raised to 5 okay i can write this equation again but let me take a liberty sigma s can be written as 9 by 20 times of sigma c so what i will do over here is 9 by 29 times of sigma c and this is going to be multiplied by 20 right okay you can solve this equation this is very simple one equation one variable i'll let you know how to solve this equation with the help of a simple calculator let me just show you how that works out so guys watch let us start from here 11 into 10 raised to minus 6 okay so we are supposed to find this value na? sigma c so let us say sigma c is x okay <clears throat> so we have framed it till here is equal to in the remaining stuff is equal to 18 into 10 raised to minus 6 into 190 18 into 10 raised to minus 6 into 190 right and then <coughs> minus minus this is sigma c that is x again divided by 10 raised to 5 1 into 10 raised to 5 is 10 raised to 5 simply and let us just close the bracket and let us just try to solve this shift solve equal to so that is working out as precisely 109.5 that's it that's it sigma c is working out as 109.5 newton 
per mm square and now what you need to do is you need to plug in the value of sigma c that is 109 over here into 9 by 20 once you do that you will also have the value of sigma s okay this is steel tube then this is copper rod let me just show you how much that will work out 109.5 into what into 9 by 20 answer into 9 divided by 20 let's do this and in decimals this is 49.2 <coughs> this is 49.2 newton per mm square so guys that was all for today i'll see you again with some fresh problems some previous year problems from uh, from gate examination as well as engineering services examinations and these are going to be objective type problems from simple stress and strain from thermal stresses so all of this and much more coming up in the next lecture until then take care have a nice day keep learning thanks